friends, I'm Beth with 50 Plus Beauty and this is a fabulous video series. Now, I don't know if you'll agree, but to me it is a fabulous video series because in this series I continue to share information with you about how I stayed slim after 60 and how you can have a slim you in 22. And more than that, you can have a really healthy you. And let me start out by saying, you would think, looking at me, oh, Beth has never had an eating problem, she's naturally thin, whatever. Well, this video is as a result of a video that I posted towards the end of last year, maybe a month before the end of last year, maybe around December 1st. And that was how I stay slim after 60. And in that video, I posted a picture of myself and I was eight months pregnant in this picture, but I'm going to post it again. It's actually the only super heavy picture of myself I have, although I do have one after I gave birth to my son and I weighed 185, which was not very pretty either. But this is how I looked at the eighth month of my pregnancy, and that is when I ate exactly what I wanted. I would eat five meals a day. I, I loved fast food back then, I hate to admit it. I have two boys, and they both grew up healthy and happy, and they're great young men now, but I feel really guilty looking back. I guess I thought if I ate enough bad quality food, enough fast food, that they would get what they needed. And I topped 200 pounds when I gave birth, and I started out at 120. So that gives you an idea of when left to my own devices and total lack of discipline, where I really am. And I always jokingly say that inside this slim body is a 250 pounder, and it is really, really true. Okay, now, in this video, I'm going to be showing you my great sugar clean out. I will be walking you through the clean out of sugars, all types of sugars, including honey, molasses, anything sweet basically, flowers of all type, and that does include any type of flour, white flour, wheat flour, whole wheat flour, bran flour, oat flour, it doesn't really matter, any kind of flour, and also artificial sweeteners, because over the years I have found that artificial sweeteners ingesting them, which I always have in the past, it really does fuel my need for sugar. And let me tell you this because basically there are several different types, like probably hundreds of different types of diets out there. And if you are like me, and what I am is I'm a 10 on the food addiction scale. And if you are someone who can deal with those diets that say, oh, eat in moderation, everything in moderation, eat one Oreo cookie or two Oreo cookies and that's enough and you can quit there, then you probably should just go away because you are not in the category of eater that I am, which is truly a food addicted eater. And basically there's a great book called Bright Line Eating and I'll put a link to the audio book below, which is what I used. But I finally learned that there are differences in eaters out there. There are those people that can have one slice of cake or a cup of cookies. There are those people who are like one or two on an addictive scale of one to 10. And then there are those people who are a nine or a 10. And I'm probably a 9.75. Susan Pierce Thompson, who wrote that whole program, and she's very food addicted, she is probably even more close to 10 than I am. I'm probably a 9.8, and she's definitely a 10, maybe an 11, because she also had an addiction to drugs in her life. And while I was addicted to alcohol earlier in my life, 22 years sober, thank the Lord, alcohol is sugar. And someone under one of my videos said, Beth, I've always thought that alcoholism is really an eating disorder because alcohol turns right to sugar. And I thought that was very eye-opening and very smart of that person because I think my problem with alcohol, which immediately turns to sugar, was almost identical to my problem in overeating sugars and carbs. And in a nutshell, if you follow this program, and there was video one of this program last week, I think, and so I hope you will watch that because in that video, I actually got off sugar. And I won't go back through all that, but you really ought to watch that because the first three days were crazy. I mean, crazy. I could not believe the impact that it had for me to actually stop sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners. And quite honestly, I look truly terrible in that video because I just could hardly put on makeup. I was so, so worn out through that experience. But it is two weeks out now from quitting sugar, flour, and artificial sweeteners. And I feel like, you know, very, very good. My moods are level, and for those of you who have followed my channel, you know that I suffer from a little bit of mild depression, always have, but really that's kind of lifted. I mean, it's just really amazing. I wouldn't say I'm totally non-depressed, but most of the time my mood is stable, and it's kind of like how before when I was eating a lot of sugar, somehow the world always was seen by me in dark colored glasses, slightly dark, and now they're just slightly rosy. I mean, it's pretty amazing. And another super weird thing happened for me, 
and that is that I have been sleeping like a log. And for those of you who followed my channel, you know that mornings I am usually up. At 1.30, 2.30 in the morning, I get up. You know, 3.30 in the morning, I think that's, you know, pretty close to the time other normal people get up, so I'm pretty happy about that. I just can't get a lot of sleep, you know, where people would say, oh, just, you know, sleep is good for you, beauty sleep, all that stuff. Some mornings on the weekends, I'll wake up at nine o'clock. I never could do that. I just could not physically sleep that long. Well, ever since I quit sugar, all that has changed. And quite honestly, I'm not sure how I love it because I was used to a lot of free morning hours. I liked my mornings. Well, this past Sunday morning, I woke up I had my alarm set for five because I wanted to get up and exercise as I do a lot of the time. And apparently the alarm went off and I hit the snooze a couple times. I woke up and it was about 8.45 in the morning. I wander out and my husband has been out for hours. He's sitting in there and I'm like, don't ever let me do that again. It's nine o'clock in the morning. I'm supposed to do a video. I've almost like lost half my day. So anyway, that's a really weird effect of no longer eating sugar and the way to do no sugar, and again, go back to my first video uh, to learn how to do that, but do it one at a time. Tell yourself, kind of like in the AA program, I can't really imagine that I'll never have another sugary dessert, you know, 20, 30 years from now for the rest of my life. I can't imagine that. So what you do is you say, you know, just for today, I'm not going to have sugar and flour and artificial sweeteners. Then you get up the next day, and if you want to make that same decision again, you do. So anyway, that's where I am with regard to that. And in just a few moments, I'm gonna take you into my kitchen to show you my great sugar clean out. But before I do that, I've been doing a lot of research on sugar and I wanna share some of it with you real quickly because I want you to realize that if you do get off sugar, you will lose weight. I mean, you will. If you're going to go on the 30 day no sugar challenge with me, which I hope between you and me will end up to be, you know, for the rest of your life. But if you're going to take the 30 day no sugar challenge, or join with me in this video series to become a slim you in 22, then I hope you'll list that below, maybe list your weight, list your goals. You know, don't share anything you're not too comfortable sharing. But when I did all this research on quitting sugar, I was amazed at the terrible health impact that sugar is having on us. This information is from a documentary, which I'll link below called Sugar Coated. In the past 20 years, obesity rates worldwide have doubled to about 600 million. And there you can see the rate of obesity in U.S. adults aged 20 to 74 has skyrocketed. Now let's take a look at sugar consumption in that time. There it is, U.S. sugar consumption from 1822 to 2016, and it is really, really going up like crazy. That is sugar per person per pounds per year. But in 2016, we were around 80 pounds of sugar per person per year, crazy. And in that time, not only are we getting fat, but we're getting hugely unhealthy. Take a look at this graph. Here is from 1960 to 2009, about 50 years. The blue line is the rates of obesity skyrocketing in that time. Diabetes is going up incredibly. Heart disease going up incredibly. And in the meantime, look at that sugar consumption in the red there. We are eating more and more sugar and refined carbs, which turn right to sugar. That's why we say no flour, because that flour turns right to sugar in your system. It's just as bad as sugar. Now, I'm just about to take you into my kitchen and show you my sugar clean out, but I did want to tell you that the goal for women is six teaspoons or less of sugar per day, and per men, it's nine teaspoons of sugar per day, and the studies show that Americans are eating between 25 and 30 teaspoons of sugar per day on average. And in the last 25 years, we've all gained about 25 pounds each. And really, as illustrated by that graph before, we're suffering from a lot of different health problems. And I want to say that on our grocery shelves, about 80% of all the processed foods out there contain sugar and or high fructose corn syrup. And look at this picture here. You can see at the top, there's beautiful healthy food at the top. And then look at those grocery shelves filled with bags and bottles of jars of foods that are filled with added sugar. And as I'm going through the pantry and looking at food labels, you do need to remember this. And I wish they would start saying two teaspoons of sugar per serving, four teaspoons of sugar, but the sugar industry is very good at kind of hiding that. For every four grams of sugar on the label, that's one teaspoon of sugar. So you can do the math. If it has 12 grams of sugar, it has three teaspoons of sugar in it. And as we're looking through this, remember it is all forms of sugar, agave, honey, molasses, any form of sugar there is, brown sugar, white sugar, it doesn't matter, and also any form of flour, white flour, bran flour, oat flour, it doesn't matter what type it is. 
and we are also getting rid of any type of artificial sweetener, including stevia. They say it's natural, but it still fuels your taste for sugar. And if you want to have a slim you in 22, you've got to get rid of that too. Okay, here I am starting out in the pantry and I've got quite a few prepared foods here. And what I'll do is I'll start and do maybe the first three with you and then I'll do the rest off camera and I'll come back and show you my sugar filled haul. So here we go and I need my peepers. I look like a bug, but it does help. Okay, let's go over here. This is a little area with spaghetti sauces and that kind of thing. And I've got some Prego Farmer's Market Roasted Garlic Tomato Sauce. And you look at the ingredients and sugar can't be in the top three. So let's look at this. Diced tomatoes and tomato juice, tomato puree, onions. So we're fine, this is fine. Roasted garlic, it goes on. No sugar in this at all. So this one is definitely a keeper. Now, here's another set of spaghetti sauces. They're called Rouse Homemade. They're a little bit expensive, but they are good. And I know for sure they don't contain sugar. They have whole tomatoes, olive oil, onions. So at this point, it would be safe. And then it goes salt, garlic, basil, black pepper, oregano. No sugar in this at all. This is a keeper as well. And this one was a surprising one to me because I'm getting rid of products with sugar, flour, and also artificial sweeteners. And this is a great brand at Walmart, G. Hughes, and this happens to be his Smokehouse Sugar-Free Barbecue Sauce. And I have several of these that some of them are in the refrigerator and they taste really, really good. He makes a variety of products and they say sugar-free, but I assume that meant they contained artificial sweetener. And then I look at the back here and basically ingredients, and it lists the ingredients, vine ripened crushed tomatoes, white vinegar, salt, lemon juice, spices, dehydrated onion, etc. And there's no sugar in here. The very last ingredient in a line of about 10 or 12 is sucralose, which is a form of sugar. So they're kind of lying to you a little bit, but it is not within the top three and it does not contain artificial sweeteners because if it had artificial sweeteners, it would be out the door. I don't want those either. So this is a keeper. Okay, this is my refrigerator and it's a little bit messy, I warn you. It's kind of like showing your underwear. <laughs> you don't necessarily want to do it, but ta-da, here's my refrigerator. So let's go ahead and get started here. Okay, Dean's French onion dip, which we had this over Christmas. And the first three ingredients, it can't have sugar, skim milk, whey, um, a bunch of other stuff in there, yeast protein, citric acid, lactic acid. It goes on and on. It does contain dextrose, but it is down in the ingredients. I don't happen to eat dairy, so this would not be for me, but I'm desugaring the house, so Alan can keep this. Okay, here is something. This is herb and garlic marinade, and it is the Great Value brand, which is, I think, the Walmart brand. And on the back, it says ingredients, water, distilled vinegar, high fructose corn syrup. Ah, this stuff does not even contain normal sugar, normal glucose. It contains high fructose corn syrup, which is terrible for you. So this is going to go. Now, I also have some little packets here of simply dressed salad dressing from Wendy's. And this was my favorite salad and I still love Wendy's salads, but now I take my own salad dressing but this is the Wendy's pomegranate vinaigrette. I think it's actually a Marzetti dressing, but it says here, water, sugar is the second ingredient. This has got to go right now. So these things are in the trash pile. Okay, let's get this. This is ketchup. Let's see about ketchup. This is Heinz tomato ketchup, and it has tomato concentrate from red ripe tomatoes, distilled vinegar, high fructose corn syrup. Yuck, 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 yuck. This is going to go in the trash. Now, let's look in the freezer, and most of the things here should be pretty decent for you because it's a lot of frozen vegetables, and this is a normal frozen vegetable mix, and let's make sure of the ingredients here. Ingredients, organic carrots, organic sweet corn, organic peas, and organic green beans. This one is totally healthy, no sugar, that's a keeper. Okay, I've completed my clean out. It took me about half an hour to give you some idea of how long yours might take. Basically, you're looking for ingredients with flour of any type, rice flour, wheat flour, oat flour, it doesn't matter. And you're also looking for products with sugar listed in the top three ingredients. And these are the products that I pulled out of the pantry. Each serving of peanut butter has one teaspoon of sugar in it, about four grams of sugar. Red Robin campfire sauce, tartar sauce had sugar. All of these things had way too much sugar and or flour. All of the baked goods, of course, had flour. They also contained a lot of sugar. So there is a look at all of those. 
even things like organic maple syrup, that has to go, sadly, it does taste good. Honey has to go because it is sugar. Sauces that contain sugar, which this one did, they have to go. Even this organic tomato sauce, of which I have a ton of it because I got it at Costco, it has to go because its ingredients, it says organic tomato puree, sea salt, organic granulated sugar. Sugar's the third ingredient, it has to go. And how many teaspoons is it per serving? Um, yes, here it is. It has three grams of sugar per serving, which is almost a teaspoon. And again, I got rid of the non-alcoholic bubbly, which I did love that, but it is very intense sugar. The cream of chicken soup had flour and sugar. These were very high sugar, very high sugar. High fructose corn syrup is the number one ingredient. And when you look at the amount of sugar per serving, 17 grams, that is basically four teaspoons of sugar in every single serving, yuck. And then all of these pastas, even the gluten-free ones, unfortunately have to go because all of them contain flour of some type. Okay, I finished cleaning out the refrigerator now, but here are the items I got rid of. Juice, total sugar. Basically, the problem with juice is when you eat one orange, you're eating one orange, but when you drink a glass of juice, you're eating five or six oranges, and that's a lot of sugar. Basically, honey ham had sugar. Another processed meat had sugar. My salad dressings, my beloved salad dressings, I love Newman's own raspberry walnut vinaigrette, but it has sugar. So does that Ken's poppy seed. These are my Wendy's dressings, which I did used to love, but they are going away. A lot of innocuous seeming sauces do have quite a bit of sugar. Barbecue sauce, cocktail sauce, chili sauce, uh, teriyaki sauce, which I used to love, of course, a couple of teriyakis there. Worcestershire sauce had added sugar. Some of the brands may not, and I'll be on the lookout for brands that I can substitute that don't have so much sugar. I love bread and butter pickles on sandwiches, but it's just like adding slabs of sugar to your sandwiches. This tartar sauce had sugar, so did that Worcestershire sauce. Red Robin Campfire Sauce, which I used to love, has a lot of added sugar. Strawberry cream cheese and Cool Whip and dairy topping. Surprisingly, not surprisingly actually, they all have a lot of added sugar. All of these products are wheat right here. The frozen biscuits, which my son loves. The bread, which my husband loves. I don't tend to eat bread. However, every now and then I get gluten-free bagels and or bread and I'll splurge. I feel lousy after I do it. It does not help my GI tract at all. But all of these things have flour and so they are out. They'll be in the trash. And you have to have something sweet to put on top of all of that flour. And so all of these jams and jellies have to go. So that is a look at what is going. Well, that was a look at my great sugar, flour, and artificial sweetener clean out. In future videos, I will be showing the replacement foods that I added to my pantry and to my refrigerator because the whole goal here in our second half is not just to get more slim and beautiful, it is to actually become healthier. Because right now, the things we're doing on a daily basis are really determining what the last five to 10 years of our life is going to look like. And if you're like me, you want it to look as great as possible. And if you're not a subscriber and you're interested in all the things that help us look and feel our best at 50 plus, then I hope you'll subscribe to my channel and please give this video a thumbs up because that would help more people see it, which is just great. Now, in the last portion of the video, I have not been doing hardly any makeup videos. And for those of you who don't know, this is not really a weight loss channel. This is a makeup skincare channel for those of us 50, 60 plus. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull myself in here a little bit and I'm going to do what I call a makeup minute. So I'm going to show you what I have on my face. And this is like a party look that is very nice and, and largely inexpensive. On my eyes, I have this Profusion Smoky Eyeshadow Palette, which is only $5 at Walmart. It's an amazing thing. I absolutely love it. And I particularly love this little purple color, which is in the outside. And I use this little cream color on my brow and this little kind of tannish color on my lids. Look at those, just very beautiful and glimmery. And Emily Noel absolutely raves about these Profusion shadows. They were in her Emily Awards, not this one in particular, but a lot of the other ones, and this is my favorite. Now I have kind of a pricey item for my contour and my highlighter, and this is a wonderful palette. I absolutely love this. And this is the Charlotte Tilbury Nudegasm palette. And what I have here is this beautiful little contour that is in my contour areas, nose. I've sculpted my chin. My chin was looking really fat for a while, or my jowls, and they seem to be looking a little better, and I think this is helping. And then I took a brush and used this. Isn't that gorgeous? 
Uh, I'll put a little more down my nose. I love that. This in, in that area and in that area, really pretty, a little bit on the cupid's bow. See, it just gives you just a little bit of a glimmer and gleam. I think it's gorgeous. Beautiful palette. As my blush, I have this Rare Beauty Cream Blush. And for those of us getting a little older, these cream blushes really do us beautiful favors in terms of really looking glossy and smooth and like real skin. Powdery blushes do tend to kind of settle in the fine lines and wrinkles. I'll put a little more of it on. I don't really need it. Oh gosh, I always do this. And I absolutely love my Angie makeup brushes and this is one of them. You just, for blush, you put it up here to make your cheekbones look higher. And then you, you go like this to start that and then you kind of blend it up. And look how beautifully that blends, just beautiful. These BK Beauty Angie makeup brushes, I'll link them below, I have a discount for you, but they are phenomenal. Oh, I just think that is such a beautiful blush. And this is in the color Nearly Apricot, and I actually have another couple of them. They are fabulous. I have one, oh God, I love this. This is in Nearly Rose. Isn't that beautiful? I love that. And then this one is in, what is this one? This is Nearly Mauve, Nearly Mauve but isn't that pretty? Absolutely very pretty. And I'll put links below. And then for mascara, I have an Allure Beauty Award winner, and this is an Ilia mascara, and I can see why this won an award. This is their Limitless Lash Mascara, and they have another one that I'll link below if you like more of a glam look. But this mascara just elongates your eyelashes and just makes them look natural and separated and gorgeous. And this is a fabulous mascara. Now on my lips, I actually have four products, but they're you know pretty quick to add. This is a City Beauty product called City Lips, and it is in clear. And I have started using this just like Kimberly, a pretty over 50 uses it. Every time I start to get made up, I just put this on. I'll go ahead and put it on over my lipstick. But it just kind of, this is in clear, and it just kind of smooths out your lips. And I put it on when I start my makeup and let it soak into my lips because I've noticed that I'm getting these lip lines kind of outside my lips and, and in my lips. And I have noticed that by the time I let this sink in, you get a little bit of a tingle, you get a little bit of a plump feeling, it looks a little plumper, and it looks just plump enough to kind of null out those lip lines. So I really love that. And then when I'm ready to apply my real lipstick, I've been using this Rare Beauty set, and this is called Nearly Mauve. I'll put a little more on, on my lips, but this is just the most beautiful color. And I think it's close to a nude, but it has a little rose in it. And I think as we get older, you know, our skin tone fades out, our lips fade out. And I really just love that. It's like gorgeous. Oh, that was just the gloss. I guess I'll just show you the lipstick. I put the lipstick on first but there is the lipstick. And this one is called Sincere, and I'll show you a look at that. Isn't that pretty? And it is just a little glossy, semi-sheer lipstick, but it really packs a lot of punch and it sticks around a good long time. And then for my lip liner, I am wearing one of my favorite lip liners ever. And this is the BK Beauty Everlast Lip Liner in the color Pink Lady. There it is, cute little thing there. And it's got the little oval tip, which I really like. And I'll show you how Pink Lady looks. <laughs> right right there. Isn't that an absolutely gorgeous little lip liner? And I just have the barest, faintest outline of the lip liner there. And then I have a fabulous new setting spray I've been using for about the past month, and I love it. This is the Benefit the Pore Professional Super Setter Spray, and I'll, I'll show you how it works. And it really does know your pores, and it has the most beautiful fine mist. <coughs> I'm going to cough. But basically, see how that just gave me that kind of youthful, glowing, radiant look of younger skin? And I don't know if you can see, but it really does kind of null out my pores. I mean, nothing gets rid of them entirely because I have very large pores through this area of my skin. But I absolutely love this, and it's one of the few setting sprays that I can really tell a difference with, at least so far. So that was a look at some of my recent favorite makeup products. And if you have any comments about any of those products, or if you'd like to make a comment about the Slim You and 22 program or your goals there, then I hope you'll leave that information in the comment section below the video. And I can't wait to see you in the next video in this series, A Slim You in 22.